Hi, it's Jordan Teen One, and today I'll be showing you how to make a new bracelet called the Spiral Twirl. And I'll show you what it looks like. This one has the black and white that spiral on the outside, and then I have red in the middle that spirals sort of in the opposite direction. And it's similar to the double cross spiral twist. I'll show you what that looks like. But you can see in this one it's a little bit thicker and I have those inside colors where I don't have that on this one. Now you can make it either on the rainbow loom or the monster tail. And I, I'm going to show it on the monster tail today but I wanted to show you what it would look like on the loom. So if you have your loom set in a rectangular shape where all the pins are in line with one another, your bands are just going to be placed in an X. And if you make it on your loom with the pins in a staggered position so they're not in line with one another, it's going to be sort of like an X but just a little bit offset. So one side will be longer than the other. But as I said, I'm going to be showing it on the monster tail. So I'll be working with four pins and my bands will make that X shape. Now you'll need about 160 rubber bands to make this bracelet. So today I have the Rainbow Loom brand bands. I'm going to be using white and the red violet, which is like a bright pink color for the outside. And then I have the ocean blue and black for the center. So I will be using the four different colors where in the one I just showed you I only used the three colors and I did have kind of a hard time coming up with a color combination that went well together where you could really pick out all four of the colors so I would just suggest that you use the darker colors for the middle bands and then the lighter colors for the outside so you might have to play around with the colors and see what looks the most appealing to you. So I'm going to be starting with white and it's going to be placed on the pin on the bottom left and go diagonally up and to the right I'm going to twist and now I want to cross that with a pink so this is going from the top left down to the bottom here in the middle and twist so we made that X and now what I want to do is place my middle colors on. So I'm just going to take one of the blue and just put it right on that pin. Just going to sit there and then I'll do black for the next one. And then on the top here I'm going to do black and then blue. So they're just going to be diagonal from one another, the same colors. And now I can put on my next layer and I'm always going to be starting on the bottom left and going up and it's always going to be white so you don't have to worry about the colors changing positions and then I'm always going to cross it with a pink and now what I want to do is remove the bottom layer I just want to make sure that I'm reaching inside of these big circles that I just put on so I'm just going to grab the white and pull it off and now the pink, just making sure I'm going inside of that black band. And now on the other side, the same thing, just making sure I'm going inside there. And push that down. And now what I want to happen is I want these big circles, these are the bands I'm using for the inner color, to shift in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to start on the bottom left here, pick this band up, and I'm going to move it over to the pin here on the left, just as a placeholder. It's not going to stay there, but I just need to make some room to work here. So now the black one's going to come over to the left, and now this blue one can come down. Now at the top here, the black is moving over to the right, and now finally this pin is empty which is going to allow me to pick up the band that's on the left here and move it to its right spot and now I'm going to put on my next layer and actually I'm going to move my camera just a little bit closer here 
So again, I'm always starting with white in that same spot here on the left. And now crossing it with the pink. Now this time and for the rest of the bracelet, when we remove the bottom layer, you want to make sure that your bottom band is coming over top of these bands that we have for the center color. So mine are blue and black. So I'm going to take this bottom band and just make sure that it's going over top of this black. And we also want them to stay in the same order on the pin. So now black should be at the bottom. And now again, the blue will be at the bottom here. And on this other side, I'm taking the bottom band. Just make sure it's going over top of that black and the black staying to the bottom. And now the same thing again here. Since these are loose right now, they might want to change position on the pin, but just put it back where it belongs. And now I want these bottom bands to move in that clockwise direction. So I'm always going to start on the bottom left here so I can move the band over to this holding pin. And now all the other ones can move in that clockwise direction. And now finally this one can go where it belongs at the top here and push down. So that's really the pattern that we're going to follow for the whole bracelet. And eventually, as I keep putting these bands on, my black and blue bands are going to get tight, so I'm going to have to add an extension. And I will show you how to do that. So again here we're removing the bottom layer and just making sure that these bands are going over top of the blue and black bands. Once these bands get tighter, it's a little bit easier to do, but then when you add the extension, they're very loose, so you might struggle with it just a bit. And now the bands are going to shift. This is what's going to make it have this twirled or twisted look. And now my next layer. And depending on what type of bands you have will determine how often you need to add your extension bands. Some brands are stretchier than others. So you can feel when your bands are just getting too tight and you are having a hard time to shift them like I'm going to do right now. See, I can tell I still have pretty much stretch left in them, so I'm not going to be ready to add the extensions for a little while. So I am just going to fast forward here. I'm going to keep working with the same pattern and after I get a couple more layers on, I'll show you what to do to add your extension bands. Now when you feel like your bands are really tight and you need to add an extension, and I'll show you, for example, here's my black band, and I feel like I could really stretch it if I really pulled on it, I could probably get another layer out of it, but when I let it go, it's pretty tight against here. That's when I want to add another extension. So I'm just going to put this back on the pin. And in order to do that, I'm going to just take my hook and go down through this bottom band. Make sure it's only the bottom one. And I'm going to pick up that same color, which is black. It's going to go up through, and I'm going to put it back on my hook. So you'll see the two bands on there. And the bottom will just go right through the top and pull to make a slip knot. So 
You want to then take your fingers and pull this nice and tight so it's really small because you want it to be as small as possible so you don't see it within the bracelet. I mean, you will see it just a little bit, but you just want to make that nice and tight. Now I'm going to go down through the blue one and I'll add the next band, giving it the same color. Put it back on and then the bottom goes through the top to make that slip knot. I'm going to pull that nice and tight. So you'll just see the loop hanging off here. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just going to extend the black one here. Pull that through and then make it nice and tight. And one more here. And get that nice and tight. Alright, so now you'll just see the loops. And so now what I need to do is shift these because I didn't do the shifting part yet. So when I have these loops, I just find it easier to grab it with my hand. I'm just going to take it off and I'll attach these loops here. Just shifting this around. And when these are loose, you might struggle a little bit with having these loops stay on the pins. If you push down on your bracelet and make sure it's at the bottom of the pins, it does help a little bit. See, this one wants to jump off. Or you can hold it with your finger, which is what I sometimes do. Now this one can move up. And now we're ready for the next layer. Sorry if my hands are in the way here. Doing the white and then the pink. And now the bottom bands have to come over top of these big loops. So you just want to make sure that you're not going up through them or it's going to mess up the look of the bracelet. So if you want, you can take your finger and sort of push this band against the pin and that might help you to get it to go over top there. Again, the same thing over here. Just making sure too that these big loops are staying at the bottom. We want them at the bottom of the pin. And on the other side here, just making sure this goes over and I can finish pulling this through since they are such big loops. It's just a little bit of a challenge. And the same thing over here. And now these need to shift. Just keep pushing down on that so the loops stay on better. You can see it's starting to grow out the bottom here. And I'm ready for my next layer. And now it should be a little bit easier to go over top because the loops will get smaller each time. And now shift. And you might want to pull them just a little bit as you're shifting them, just to make sure they're a little bit tighter here within the bracelet since they are big loops right now. So I am just going to continue on in the same pattern. When I feel like these bands are getting really tight and I just can't do any more, I will add the extension. You definitely don't want to add the extension until these are the tightest that they can be because within the bracelet you want it to be nice and tight. So I am just going to fast forward here and when the bracelet gets long enough, I will show you what to do to remove it from the loom.
When you have your bracelet to the length that you'd like it and you're ready to take it off of the loom, you should have two rubber bands left on all four of the pins. And depending on when you added your last extension band, um, some of your bands may be a little bit looser than others, but I try to stop when my bands are more on the tighter side, and they are right now. And if they're a little bit loose, you can just loop them through one another at the end. But what I'm going to do is take the bands that are on the bottom left, I'm just going to take them both and move them up diagonally to the right. And now I'm going to take the bottom two rubber bands and pull them over the top. I'm going to take the two bands on the bottom right and move them diagonally up and to the left. Just make sure they both get on that pin. And I'm going to take the bottom two bands and pull them over the top. So now I have two bands left on each of these pins. And I'm going to just take the two on the right and move them over to the left. It's a little bit tight. Get them both to go on there. Now the bottom two will come over. I have two left on here, so I'm just going to get them on my hook. I can pull this off. And now I'm going to take a clip. I have an S clip here. I'm going to hook them through. And then I'll go on the other side and I'll pick up some bands on the end. These are a little bit loose, so I'm just going to take the pink ones and pull them through the white. And now I can hook these on the other side. And then here is the bracelet. So you can see this spiral pattern. The pink and the white are on the outside and then the blue and black go in the middle. And you can see where the extension bands were added just a little bit. If you look closely, you can see little knots here and there. But overall, I think it has a pretty unique look to it. I like how the two spirals intertwine with each other. And then here is the other one that I had shown you at the beginning, where I used just the red in the middle. I think you don't notice the spiral pattern as much when you use the same color but I still think it has a nice look to it. I hope that everyone enjoyed making their spiral twirl bracelets. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook, post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page, and please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all of my latest tutorials. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram, so please feel free to subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching.